In this five minute lecture, I want to say something about an increasingly significant area of sports participation, namely so-called lifestyle sports and activities. Lifestyle sports were at the heart of the growth in sports participation that occurred across the global north in the 1980s, and they continue to play a big part in sports participation among young and old alike. The terms lifestyle sports or lifestyle activities tend to be used in one of two overlapping ways. For those charting allegedly postmodern trends in youth cultures, lifestyle sports are defined by Belinda Wheaton as a specific type of alternative sport, including both established activities like surfing and skateboarding through to newly emergent sports like kite surfing. In this alternative sense, she adds, the term lifestyle encapsulates the culture that surrounds the activities as much as the activities themselves. There are, according to Alan Thompson and colleagues, three ideas central to this conception of lifestyle sports as styles of life. First, they are alternative in the sense of being different from conventional sporting forms such as team games, and unlike some sports, are fundamentally about participation rather than spectating, either live or via various media. In addition, and in contrast to conventional sports, alternative or lifestyle sports are characterised, so they say, by a relative lack of regulation and a customary refusal by participants to follow regulatory codes. Second, the meanings attached to lifestyle sports often have a personal dimension beyond success in competition. Finally, they have a tendency towards being extreme insofar as they involve risk taking, including extreme locations, extreme emotions, transgression and extreme skills. Now, there are a number of issues with the conception of lifestyle sports such as this. First, it seems to over-exaggerate the distinction between lifestyle and conventional sports. Many sports are primarily about participation, in the sense that very many of those who watch or follow particular sports are either participating currently or have participated in them. In addition, increasing numbers of young people are engaging with less formal and competitive, in other words, less regulated, versions of conventional sports such as football. At the same time, sizable minorities of those taking part in lifestyle sports not only participate, but also watch and take part in demonstrations, exhibitions and competitions in, for example, the various forms of boarding and blading, climbing, BMX, mountain biking and so forth. Second, as portrayed in postmodern terms, the concept of lifestyle sports tends towards a dichotomous representation of what's better understood perhaps as a continuum. But another way, some young people are involved not only in both established sports, such as climbing and surfing, and emergent lifestyle sports, skateboarding, free running and ultimate frisbee, for instance, but also more conventional sports, such as team games. And they differ by degree in the extent to which they adopt some or all of the supposed cultural artefacts, such as dress, musical tastes, legal and illicit drug use, and adherence to particular forms of participation associated with lifestyle sports. In fact, many young people who take part in more established sports also adopt some of the behaviours and attitudes associated with lifestyle activities. All told, claims that participants are immersed in or live the subcultures that are said to surround activities such as surfing, deliberately seeking a distinctive alternative lifestyle, which provides them with a particular and exclusive personal and social identity. In other words, that lifestyle sports offer an alternative culture to dominant sporting subcultural as well as broader cultural practices tend to be exaggerated. While sports such as surfing and climbing may offer alternative culture to those participating in them, whether or not participants are in fact significantly influenced by these alternative cultures, let alone engage in them, are empirical matters. That's to say they need measuring and as yet the jury is out. The argument is that postmodern conceptions of lifestyle sports tends to exaggerate differences between supposedly distinct sporting groups. And that's also applicable to the claim that lifestyle sports offer a counter to the commercially exploitative world of mainstream sport. Many young people embrace rather than eschew competition and or commercialization, even in such alternative activities as skateboarding and BMX. Internationally, summer and winter X Games feature competition alongside exhibition. While in the UK, events such as the Urban Games, Gold Fest, Gold Coast Ocean Fest rather, National Adventure Sports and World Skateboarding Championships are gaining popularity year on year. 
In addition, many young people take part in both conventional sporting forms as well as the newer, perhaps more adventurous lifestyle activities. Indeed, a feature of sports participation among young people over the last 40 years has been an increase in the breadth and diversity of sporting forms undertaken. And this includes a preference for more recreational, less competitive modes of participation, often alongside competitive and conventional sporting forms. Young people may be particularly interested in surfing, skating and blading and the clothing and musical tastes associated with this, for example. But such activities are unlikely to dominate, let alone dictate their entire lifestyles and are unable to provide substantial and enduring foundations for self-identities. Now, in contrast to postmodern perspectives, Fred Coulter's conception of lifestyle activities rather than merely sports is based on a more conventional use of the term lifestyle, implying a larger element of possible choice characteristic of modern day consumer societies and grounded more in empirically observable patterns and trends extensive survey data, for example. Coulter describes lifestyle activities or sports in terms of the more or less common features of the many and varied activities, new and old, that have become increasingly popular among young people in recent decades. These, he suggests, are characterised as being non or at least less competitive than traditional team sports, more recreational in nature, flexible, individual or small group activities, sometimes with a health and fitness orientation. In other words, activities that can be undertaken how, more or less competitively, for example, where, commercial gyms, local authority sports centres, with whom, singly or with friends, and when, in bouts of spare time, that young people want. As Coulter has observed, not only have lifestyle activities experienced substantial increases in participation among young people, they're also among those with the most regular participants, while the evident shift in participatory terms towards more individualistic, recreational and lifestyle activities may not signal the end of sport in its more competitive institutionalised forms, it may at the very least signal a redrawing of the traditional boundaries and meaning of sport. Nevertheless, the substantial shift towards lifestyle activities cannot be taken to indicate that sport, and especially competitive games, is in terminal decline among young people. The trend in leisure time sport among young people reflect a broadening and diversification of participation to incorporate lifestyle sports and activities rather than a wholesale rejection of sport per se. More recently, the shift towards lifestyle sports has witnessed two further trends, what have been labelled the indoorization of adventure sports and adventure sport light. Indoor indoorization involves conventional outdoor activities such as climbing, skiing, surfing and skydiving, which used to be exclusively practiced in a natural environment, now being offered for consumption in safe, predictable and controlled indoor centres. Adventure sport light, on the other hand, involves detuned, lighter versions of conventional adventure sports, often indeed participated in in indoor centres. 